Very good morning, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Welcome to BGF. My name is Bob Eaton and I'm the host for today. Today, let's, uh, the program will be, we'll start out with the Buja Buja. After that, I'll introduce uh, Professor Ui for his talk. And uh, then we will... Very good morning, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Welcome to... Okay, so let's start with the Buddha Puja. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Buddhang saranang gachami. Damang saranang gachami. Sangkang saranang gachami. Dutiampi buddhang saranang gachami. Dutiampi damang saranang gachami. Dutiampi sangkang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi buddang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi damang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi sangkang saranang gachami. Five precepts. Panati pata vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Adina dana vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Kami su michachara vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Musawada vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. Suramiraya maja pamadatana vera mani sikha padang samadhyami. The five ennobling virtues. With deeds of love and compassion, I purify my action. With selfless giving, I purify my action. With moderation and contentment, I purify my action. With truthful words, I purify my speech. With clear mindfulness and calmness, I purify my thought. Sabe Sata Suki Honto, may all beings be happy. So good morning, brothers and sisters and Dhamma. Welcome to Sunday at BGF. Today we will be speaking with on the topic relating, reflecting on the relationship between COVID-19, our lives, and the universe. The speaker has actually written a book on a similar topic, which is uh, re reflecting on the relationship between our lives and the universe, which we will introduce afterwards. The speaker to the, today is a very distinguished uh, lay Buddhist is uh, Professor Ui Hong Tat from the Utah University. He obtained his Bachelor of Engineering First Class Honours in the Electrical Engineering from the University of Malaya, Masters of Science from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, US, and PhD from Multimedia University, Malaysia. He is currently the Senior Professor of Lee Kong Chien Faculty of Engineering and Science of Utah. Previously, Professor worked in Motorola Penang, Intel Penang, MIT's Research Laboratory for Electronics, UC of Malaya, and the Multimedia University. He is currently a fellow of the Academy of Sciences Malaysia, ASM, a fellow and Secretary General of the ASEAN Academy of Engineering and Technology, AAET, and an educational counselor of the MIT. So with that, let's uh, pass the floor over to Professor Wee Hong Tat. Professor, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. A very good morning to all of you, uh, brother and sisters in the Dharma. Uh, it is, uh, I would like to thank BGF for inviting me uh, for this actually uh, sharing 
uh, today uh, is on the Sunday morning. So I would like to actually start uh, the presentation. Uh, I'm, can you all see the screen? Okay, now let's start the, the presentation. And then uh, I will actually try to give uh, some time for Q&A as well at the end of the presentations. So without uh, further ado, I would like to start with the presentation. Okay, now this is actually based on the uh, the contents of this one covering various aspects of sciences and it is based on the uh, book I, I wrote uh, for uh, it's a collection of articles that I, I wrote for a uh, past number of years uh, for a magazine uh, called Pullman. Okay, now first of all, uh, uh, we look at our, our current universe. As you know, universe is huge. It is really huge, and you can see from many of these uh, scientific uh, documentary, we know that it is actually uh, a, a, a very large scale. Now, how large is our universe? Uh, as you can see that over here on the right-hand side, uh, upper right of this, uh, you can see that uh, if you are Milky Way is our galaxy, then uh, uh, is connected to many other galaxies in this the whole universe in a local group called Raniakia. Okay, and beyond that, there's also further other universe. Okay, now if we look at the model of magnitude of space, okay, now the diameter of observable universe that the, those we can actually observe and all that is actually uh, uh, 93 billion light years. I mean, if light, which is very fast, uh, speed travel for a year is called one light year of distance, you have to travel 93 billion. Uh, to travel from one end of the observable universe to the other end of observable universe. Now, beyond that, there may be others uh, which we don't know yet. <laughs> and if you look at the, this is universe, you know, which is very huge. But if you look at the, the smallest distance, now uh, we're talking about Planck uh, uh, length, okay, which is up to 10 to the minus 35 meter, which is very, very small. Okay, considering that radius of electron, which is very small, is only 2.82 times uh, 10 to the minus 15 meter. So if you look at the magnitude of the order of magnitude of space uh, from the smallest that we can measure, okay, 10 point minus 35 to the biggest uh, uh, observable, observable universe, of 10 to, minus, uh, 10 to the power of 23, it is actually an, uh, a, a difference of uh, 58 order of magnitude, which is a lot, okay? So now I would like to actually share with you actually a, a short video to, to let you see the, 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 the skills of this part, okay? Now, okay, let me switch it on. Okay, so for this video, as you can see, we are actually uh, uh, starting from a lady who is actually lying down on the uh, uh, ground uh, near San Francisco. Okay, so you can see that and then I'll start playing this one and I'll explain to you. So let's say if we are actually getting farther and farther away from her, I'll say, she is actually in the Google campus, okay? And then you can see that slowly as we zoom out and you can see the Google campus and then the San Francisco, Silicon Valley, the San Francisco Bay, and then West Coast of US, okay? And then now we are seeing the whole earth, okay? And we are still actually going farther and farther away and you can see the skills uh, at the bottom uh, that shows the skills. So now we are actually going out uh, from the Earth and also uh, moving into the Mars uh, 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 orbit and then Jupiter, Saturn, and then now we can see the whole solar system, okay, uh, uh, as you can see. And if we go further and further away, okay, then we can see that actually this solar system and also uh, the nearby stars, uh, the, the one nearest to us and also the nearby stars all in these uh, galaxies of Milky Way. Okay, so as we move on now, it's about 10,000 light years across. We can see our galaxies, okay, and the nearby galaxies, okay. Uh, and if we move further up, 
up uh, Andromeda galaxy and you can see these clusters all linked together of many, many universes, okay, uh, in this uh, uh, observable universe, okay? So if we further go inside there, okay, now we are actually going back, uh, backwards, uh, going to the smallest scale that we can see. So it is actually a very huge uh, 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 magnitude of uh, order of magnitudes. Okay, so as you now actually moving back to the Earth, okay, we go back to the same lady, and now we want to go inside her eye, okay. Go inside her eye, and then slowly you can see the pupil, uh, iris. Uh, then we go to the 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 uh, retina and look at the blood vessels. And then you see the white blood cells and go further in. Now at 10 micrometers, one micrometer, and you see a chromosome. And we go to each individual atom now. And you can see after the, the molecule and atoms, you can see basically uh, this uh, electron orbiting the nucleus. But beyond the orbits of the electron is this vast space of emptiness before finally we zoom down into a very tiny, small, the nucleus of the atom, okay? Uh, there's a lot of empty space and all, and then we go, go down to quark level, okay? So in fact, if you look at all the atoms, in fact, they have a lot of uh, uh, big emptiness or uh, the space in between the, the uh, electron cloud and also the uh, nucleus, okay? So, so now, actually, after seeing this one, let's go back to this uh, 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 PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So you can see that this is actually huge uh, magnitude of the uh, order of magnitude of space. Okay, now we'll go back to this. Uh, uh, let me share the screen now. Uh. Okay. Ah, so if you look at the just now the scale, now we like like to know whether in this space are we actually also moving around. Now we know that the Earth orbits uh, around itself actually uh, for every day. So we are actually going around the world in one day. At equator, the speed is actually we are traveling together, all of us traveling together at 1,600 kilometers per hour. And then at the same time, the Earth is actually orbiting around the sun, okay? And uh, in one year, actually we are, uh, we are now actually traveling at 107,000 kilometers per hour moving around so one year we, we have traveled a long long distance and for information in fact we our sun is also uh, uh, circling around the center of milky way in every 225 million years uh, we go one round of the milky ways we go one round of milky ways okay so uh, that means that if uh, the earth uh, we are talking about uh, these 225 million years uh, uh, currently, we are actually consider knowing the, the 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 age of the Earth. Okay, we are now actually at about a uh, twentieth uh, Milky Way year, <laughs> uh, in that sense. Okay, because we have circled the 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 solar system have actually going around the uh, center of Milky Way for about twenty times already. Okay, and then this Milky Way is also travel towards the Leo and Virgo direction. Okay, at the speed of 2 million kilometers per hour. So although we may think that we are actually still uh, standing still or uh, sitting still in front of our laptop or computer, in fact, we are moving relatively, okay, at very, very fast speed, okay? Uh, I'd like to actually show you that, in fact, this trajectory uh, is actually uh, uh, not as what we can see. It's also uh, helical, okay? Now I show it to you, this, uh, another one. Let me see.
Okay, now I see you, I would like to share with you another video. Okay, so if you look at this video, you can see that this is actually the, the uh, Milky Way. And then at the one part of one arm of the Milky Way, you can see that it's actually our sun uh, together with all the planets going around the Milky Way, okay? Uh, okay, uh, and you can see that, okay, this is actually the trajectory. So we are actually, uh, the, the sun is actually bringing all the uh, planets. You can see the planets are actually moving and at the same time actually circulating around the sun. As the sun is bringing the whole group going around the, actually the uh, center of the Milky Way, uh and it is not really a, a, a true circle as well as you can see okay so there's all this helix kind of thing and all that but uh so sometimes depending on our perspective we may not visualize this we thought it's just a a, a simple circle circular motion but in fact it's as you can see this helical kind of a movement uh, uh around the center of the universe uh our uh set around, sorry around our milky way Okay, so, so after seeing this one, so let's go back to the PPT, okay. Uh, uh, so from here, we can see that we are not actually around, but we may think that, oh, in this case, we may be very far away from what is happening in the whole uh, universe or in our galaxy itself, okay. But it's not true also. For example, uh, the sun. We know that now if you look out uh, from your, your room and now uh, you can see the window and then uh, you can see the sunlight coming out from, from outside uh, and all that. Just imagine uh, the sunlight actually is actually uh, that we are seeing now or we are uh, experiencing this uh, sunlight. It just actually came from the sun about eight minutes ago. <laughs> So all those photons that we are receiving now, uh, eight minutes ago, it was actually coming from the sun. <laughs> so we are also not that uh, actually far away and all that. In fact, everything is interconnected. Everything is interconnected. Okay. Now, when we go to the very small scales in terms of particle and super strings and all that, now all this theory about what is actually the small scale and we talk about even uh, beyond proton, then we are now talking about the quark, and then beyond quark, we are talking about the super string theory that is actually vibration of energy uh, that forms this, uh, the, the quark and all that, okay? So uh, I would like to share with you uh, 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 another uh, short uh, simulation. This one is actually shared by uh, Professor David Gross, okay? who is a Nobel laureate uh, uh, in physics uh, uh, for this uh, quantum chromodynamics, okay? And he gave a talk in our university, University Tunku Abraman, a few years ago, and he shared with us this uh, simulation inside the talk, okay? So what he was trying to show to us is actually, uh, they tried to actually, uh, the scientist was trying to study what is actually, whether you can find anything between the vacuum space or not. I mean the actual vacuum that they remove all the molecules and everything, the vacuum space, and they would like to see what is inside the vacuum. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you these short simulations of that. Okay. Okay, now you I hope that you can see. Okay, so in fact, this is actually within a very short distance. Okay, uh, 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 of an empty space and all that, which is supposed to be a vacuum, and they found that it's actually you can see these fluctuations of the density of the energy <laughs> inside the vacuum itself, the quantum fluctuations that they're calling. So in fact, vacuum space is not really also vacuum. Okay, uh, 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 uh yeah. 
So it is actually uh, 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 something that we like to actually highlight that vacuum space is not really actually vacuum. In fact, it has these quantum fluctuations of energies as well. Okay. Uh, now, actually, uh, this, uh, let's go back to another. Okay. So from here, okay, we can see that it is actually a lot of bigs uh, from the very big to the very small. Uh, in fact, it is actually also not permanent in the sense that with the conditions and all that, you can see the energy, uh, 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 our sun and, and, and the universe and all is also moving and all that, okay? So now there's actually this, uh, uh, the latest uh, 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 new theories uh, from the physicists, they're talking about this multiverse. Professor Alan Lightman of MIT actually wrote the book, The Accidental Universe. Inside the book, he mentioned that uh, Dalai Lama once actually uh, gave a talk at MIT and talked about sunyata uh, uh, or emptiness lah, during a lecture uh, in at MIT in 2012, where in the physical world, nothing is permanent and no, no thing can exist independently, okay? So uh, under the concept of multiverse, okay, maybe beyond our current universe, there's also other universe uh, that through quantum fluctuations after their its own Big Bang, uh, it has its own physical parameters. Some may survive uh, after a while, some may continue to develop, some may be even more advanced than our current this universe. And our universe happens to be a universe that survives in its present form with right conditions. Okay, uh, that is actually what is written in this Professor Alan Lightman's book uh, in The Accidental Universe. Okay, so it's actually because of all the cause and effect, uh, right conditions, then, then we have this actually uh, 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 this universe. Okay, so from Big Bang to Cell, as you can see over here, uh, uh, physicists think that the Big Bang started about 13.7 billion years ago. And then the age of the Milky Way is actually about 13.2 billion years. And for our solar system, it's about 4.6 billion years, and Earth is about 4.5 billion years. Okay, so with this uh, 4.5 billion years of the uh, 4.6 billion years of solar system, so now just now we was mentioned every 225 million years, we actually the, the sun actually going around the uh, Milky Way once. So that's why now we are about at the 20th uh, uh, galaxy year in that sense. Okay, and then for the first cell on Earth, and yeah, you can see that it is actually over uh, uh, 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. And it's the life started on Earth. Okay. Now, so by knowing all these skills and all that, now let's look at our molecules. In fact, if in one breath, uh, the number of air molecules actually involved uh, in one breath is about that big number of molecules. Okay. And then the uh, number of cells in human body is 30 points, 37.2 trillion, and number of bacterial cells in human body is also 39 trillion. So you can see that in every single moment, okay, uh, uh, inside our body and all that, uh, the, like the movement of the cells, the air molecules, and, 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 and the, uh, some of the cell, of course, uh, die, and some of them actually uh, through this division of cell, and then we have new cells and all that. It's happening every single second, okay? A lot of them, okay? And if you look at that, uh, our, the number of cells in human body is 37.2, and the bacterial cell is also about the same, okay? So it is very important that sometimes we say we have to keep a good ecosystem, <laughs> our body, a, a, a good uh, a, a symbiosis with uh, the bacteria, especially the bacteria in the gut, in certain areas in, in our body, that actually helps to actually regulate our normal body mechanisms, okay? So look at this one, and knowing the evolution of Earth, you can see that uh, 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 this time, I think our Earth is actually a very precious moment that we can actually have this uh, uh, good, uh, uh, normal atmospheres, uh, climate and all that. Because throughout the whole evolution of Earth, there were times that the whole Earth was actually 
filled with ice, the whole earth, okay, uh, icy uh, earth. And there's also, were, were also time that the earth, whole earth full with actually a lot of volcanoes and, and, and all that and all that, and not stable. And then with the platonic movement, the continents also merge and then uh, uh, separate again and all that. Okay, so it is actually in long term, is that you can see the movement is always going on and all that. And if you look at the evolution of life on Earth, it's also like this. Since 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago with a single cell, and then up till now, you can see the biodiversity that has actually developed and all, which is actually amazing. Okay, now, and the other one is actually, as you can see, if you through the evolution tree, okay, uh, we can actually see that uh, uh, human being actually with is a close family like chimpanzees and gorillas and also orangutans and all that. Okay, so you can see this uh, uh, over the through the evolutions. Okay, and and how actually human being and then the even within our own groups. Okay, Homo sapiens actually managed to actually uh, become the uh, the only actually surviving uh, human family. Okay, uh, which is all of our people on Earth now. Okay, so if you look at from very big scales of the universe to the Earth to our human society and ourselves since our, when we were born and until we are actually uh, at this uh, senior age and all that, we can see all these cause and effect and the right condition that make it happens and all that. Okay, so that's why we have to be also responsible for all we do. Uh, 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 to our earth. Uh, that's why in recent years uh, you can see that uh, environment protections, how to save our earth is actually getting more and more important and to avoid uh, global warming is also very important because whatever we do actually will affect our own earth as well. Okay, So by knowing all this one in terms of the uh, our earth and the universe and all that, now we want like to look at it a little bit about the statistics. Okay, now we know that every day we have to make many choices. Okay, every day we have to make many choices. Uh, and sometimes uh, there will always, uh, whenever we actually wake up in the morning, we always say that hopefully today is a good day. <laughs> okay, but you, if you know about the choices that we have to make every day, in fact, there are so many choices of, uh, uh, that we have to make a day. How can we make sure that all choices are good choices? Okay, uh, if you look at the probability uh, to get all choices that you make a, in a day are uh, all good choices, I think the overall probability is very small, very, very small. Okay, but however, if you, if you look at our emotions, a lot of time our emotions actually frustrate with uh, whatever decision we make and whatever actually experience we have. Okay. Sometimes you may uh, wake up in the morning and say that, okay, today during lunchtime, I'm going to go to this, uh, my favorite restaurant to order this dish. Who knows uh, when you go there and then that day, uh, the chef was on leave and then you could not have the dish you want or the dish uh, uh, does not taste as what you, you would like it to have. Okay, so you can see that, in fact, uh, Try to calculate the probability of being lucky or blessed every day, every week, every month, or every year. It is very small. Okay. So, by knowing this nature, in order to actually uh, 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 ensure all this, you know that it is impossible. But one thing that we can do is actually we can calm our mind because it is easier than to calm the outside world. <laughs> Okay, so that's why is there's, there's also this uh, uh, Chinese proverb that says that, okay, uh, if in front of us there's a, there's a mountain, okay, if we can't turn the mountain or move the mountain away, we choose the road that go around it, okay. If the road is blocked, uh, human, as a human body, we can actually turn, so to find other ways and to go. Even if we are actually limited by our physical movement itself, then our mind can turn, okay? So it's in this case, uh, it's actually from property sense of uh, point of view, uh, try to evaluate this one, okay? So uh, by knowing this one, by knowing this one, we know that, in fact, we don't actually uh, uh, expect uh, too much that whatever our set decisions every day is always a good one, 
Okay. In fact, what is more important is actually how we actually uh, look at our own mind. Okay. And in fact, how we our mind actually react to the experience we have is actually more important because it is impossible for us to control all the many factors outside our body. Okay. Uh, who knows? Let's say just now we look at the universe and the solar system. Who knows? I mean, maybe uh, two years or three years from down the road and there's a big comet coming to, and then it is actually uh, uh, maybe it may hit the earth and all that. And you totally change the life on earth and all that. Okay. So it is very important for us to realize that as well. That's why uh, 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 we, we call this uh, uh, the uh, back swan effect. Black swan effects actually refers to incidents that are unlikely to happen, but it happened uh, will bring great impact. I think currently we are having this black swan effect, uh, which is COVID-19. I think a year ago, nobody actually predicts this. Okay, uh, But now we are actually facing this and all that. So when we are having this black swan effect, it's also no point for us to actually go and, go and actually bring uh, what actually caused this and, 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 and all this and and, uh, 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 and all. in fact in more important thing is actually to look at how we can handle the current situations okay because this is only the present moment is something that we can actually manage ourselves and control ourselves okay so sometimes by understanding impermanence we treasure our life when things go well okay and and contemplating on impermanence we know that we live with hope when life is difficult. Okay, so now we know that okay, uh, hopefully vaccine will come soon. Okay, and hopefully next year we can slowly go back to our normal life and all that. Okay, so this is something that we need to actually see how we can deal uh, with the situation. Now, not only talking about this COVID nineteen, every family, uh, even our own self, every company. Uh, 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 country and, and even the whole earth and all that may have this black swan effect, okay? So uh, when it comes and all that, since it's unpredictable, okay? So when it comes and all that, what is what we should do is actually to face it, okay? And then also to handle, to actually to overcome all this problem. And so Master Sun Yen actually once mentioned, whenever we are actually facing with any challenges and any problem, First of all, what we need to do are these four steps. Okay, first is actually to face it. Next is to accept it. Uh, that is actually the difficult part of it. Our mind uh, have to accept it that now it has happened. So what should we do? Okay, then we handle it, process it, handle it, and all that. And after we have done this one, we let it go. Okay, so this is something uh, that is uh, also very meaningful for us uh, to actually. Uh, think about this one uh, when facing this COVID-19, okay? Now, if you look at the history of the Earth, uh, 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 all the all kinds of living uh, things uh, on Earth and all that, uh, over these uh, years, uh, millions of years and on Earth, uh, we already have actually five mass extinction events uh, all these years. As you can see, after right of this uh, uh, PowerPoint screen, you can see, uh, five times already. Okay, the 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 sixth one is actually just predicted. What if uh if human being cause too much actually uh destructions to the nature that it may actually bring down the number of uh, uh different species and families uh on earth. Uh, that may be the sixth mass extinction. But this is actually the uh 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 uh, uh, uh projections uh, if we continue to do this one. Okay, so we know that, like for example, the last one uh, is actually due to the extinction of dinosaurs. But if we look at the upper right corners of the chart, you can see that even after a while with the mass is the extinction, but through the evolution, new species actually become uh, 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 dominant again and then spread and then we have more species come back. So the number of uh, species and families and all continue to grow over these durations on earth as you can see there. Okay, so this is actually the nature of how it can continue to adapt itself and then to actually uh, 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 to continue uh, surviving. Okay, now the next slide actually show you this tree of life. 
Now, how to actually look at this tree of life? We can see that, okay, at the center of the, uh, look at this hemisphere kind of a drawing. And we can start actually focus by focusing at the center of this hemisphere, okay, a bottom uh, center, uh, where the time starts 3.5 or 3.8 billion years ago, okay, uh, since the Earth birth. And, and then you can see that uh, on the, at near the center there, there's actually one uh, new uh, uh, origins, uh, start with the single cell and on in start. And when you go further in times, uh, in terms of the Earth history and all that, then you go to the outer layers of this hemisphere. As you can see, when you go slowly, the cell develop this bacteria group and plants group, the animals and fish, reptiles, birds, uh, and mammals and all that, you can see that it slowly move. And then uh, if you look at the outer circle of this uh, tree of life, you can see all the kind of species, uh, organisms uh, that we have, uh, uh, living organisms that we have on Earth and all that, okay? And if you go to the up, uh, the rightmost corner, uh, uh, bottom corner and all that, you can see that it's actually where a uh, human actually uh, species is there. Okay, you can see that. Okay, now if you look at this tree of life, there were also some drawing, like for example, a dinosaur, you can see. That that actually shows you that during this, uh, the last mass extinctions, a lot of dinosaurs become extinct, okay? And slowly, their space are actually occupied uh, by others, like for example, uh, birds and others and all that, okay? So knowing all this one, you can see that uh, all the species uh, on Earth, they have this uh, capability of adapting, okay? Uh, the same thing for the bacteria and viruses and all that. The, this slide actually shows us the history of pandemics over the past, they say, uh, uh, past uh, 700 over years and all that. As you can see, as you go to the nearer, uh, 1800, 1900, 2000 and all that, you can see more and more of these pandemics happening. Uh, probably because of the communications, uh, 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 the transportations and all that, that facilitate the spread of these uh, uh, viruses and bacteria. But also maybe uh, because of reasons that we are actually uh, 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 exploring a lot of the uh, natural environments, breaking into these uh, forests, uh, into different places and all that, uh, and, and destructing the, the environment. That may be also another cause of this one, okay? So uh, we we'll never know what will happen and all that, okay? Uh, I remember that uh, when I was actually doing some uh, scientific expeditions uh, that uh, because of our project in Antarctica uh, about a decade ago and all that. And when we were there, uh, when we were actually out there in Antarctica and, and we walked on the, the ice, uh, snows and all that. Uh, and a lot of this one, uh, you, you also don't know whether beneath there, there may be also uh, others, uh, uh, organisms, living organism, maybe temporary because it's the cold weather and all that. But in future, whether you will can be become alive again, we, we we have no idea about this one. Okay. So now, then the next slide actually show us also uh, all the reasons uh, pandemics, and you can see that uh, uh, in terms of the death involved and all that, there can be also big uh, pandemics and all that. So hopefully this time. Uh, uh, very soon that with vaccine will be able to actually control uh, and then finally actually overcome this uh, uh, pandemic of COVID-19, okay, as you can see, okay. Now, so during this time of COVID-19 and pandemic, then start, we start realizing about something. In fact, if you look at uh, uh, the essential skills for us, to continue uh, living and to continue to actually live with the challenges of life and also the uh, 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 disasters from the natural uh, 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 natural disasters and all that. In fact, there are these two essential skills that when we actually grow up and all, we need to develop ourselves. First is actually our, abil uh, our ability to adapt to outside changes. As we know, 
uh, outside change, outside the uh, uh, everything is changing. Okay, the environment, the nature, the climate, even in terms of the uh, 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 because of the be before COVID nineteen, we in fact we were talking about uh, uh, artificial in the challenges of artificial intelligence that we have to continue to actually learn new things and to overcome this one. Uh, so and another ability that we think is very important is actually when we are actually facing the outside world, trying to adapt to all kinds of changes. In fact, there's also another skill which is very important, which is our inner mind tranquility how our mind reflects to the the changes outside and how we can continue to be mindful to come our mind which is also very very important okay uh I, maybe you have heard about this uh, or you have actually watched this uh, his interview uh the famous author who has actually written the popular book bestseller books uh, uh like the book serpent or homo homo deus and all that, uh, uh, the famous author Harari, he was actually once asked about what kind of the skills that you he think that future in future, uh, young generations or, or people should actually possess. And he mentioned that, of course, the one skill is actually you should have this ability to continue lifelong learning, to continue to learn and to adapt to the latest changes, even with the challenges of AI and all that. This one. A critical skill and the other one he mentioned uh, which is very important is emotional intelligence or he also called a, a, a mental balance which is also important okay so COVID-19 may be actually one challenge but beyond COVID with the rapid development of technology I think we will see a lot of new uh, uh, technology devices innovation coming out and it will totally change our life and also change the, the professions, okay? Uh, and how to deal with it and how to actually uh, provide this human touch and empathy, uh, which is actually very important to connect people. That's why Microsoft CEO actually uh, stress a lot on empathy. Uh, he said that it is very important that in this technological age, uh, uh, besides uh, 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 the technical, technological knowledge and all that, uh, we should have this empathy so that we can provide this human touch uh, and also understanding uh, to, to service to actually help all human beings to become better, which is very important. Okay, That's why nowadays uh, we like to always actually stress that uh, when we know that uh, with the fourth industrial revolution, in order to actually train the next Age or next generation of talents and all that. It is very important. Uh, is actually to actually develop uh, 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 people with growth mindset. That means they are willing to learn, willing to face challenges and all that, to learn new things and a growth mindset. People with growth mindset and empathy. Okay. That means that it is important to, to, to actually face the challenges of fourth industrial valuation we need to produce a lot of uh, knowledge worker who are who who actually have this uh, growth mindset and also empathy uh, so these are the things that also uh, echo to the two essential skills we mentioned here okay so knowing about this one uh, uh this is actually a comic lah. Uh, just look at evolution and all that and now uh, it's time for us to make sure that we protect the environment. Okay, now so uh, recent years, I think uh, a lot of the, these uh, uh, new discoveries has also happened, uh, and people are actually found that actually in observable universe, uh, there are in fact about hundred billion galaxies. Uh, this again is an estimate, hundred billion galaxy, and if each galaxy has uh, hundred billion stars. So we are talking about one to the power of ten, uh, sorry, ten uh, with a uh, uh, ten order of twenty-two uh, numbers of actually stars available. So it's most likely uh, possible that uh, within these stars, uh, we can find actually some solar system or some uh, 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 some systems where it can actually provide an uh, environment uh, as suitable as Earth. To nurture, uh, to grow life and all that, and these are what we call the exoplanet. 
okay, where they actually uh, provide this uh, environment that are maybe suitable uh, like the environment uh, on Earth. Okay, so these are all candidates for Earth 2.0. And now, of course, we have more than 262. We have a few hundred to go uh, beyond thousands or so uh, of possible potential SO planets. Okay, for example, one of them, SO planet Kepler 4.2b. Okay? They found that, that uh, on this planet, uh, one year is about 385 days. And it is actually, uh, they have the, about the same size of suns and, and planets. Uh, the planet itself is also the same size as Earth. And the distance of this planet from the sun, from its sun, is also about the same distance from, of Earth from the sun. So this may be actually a potential candidate that may also grow life and all that. Okay, So this is another thing that we want to see the development. So knowing about this evolution of human, uh, as you can see that uh, we, we are not too sure what we are actually going to. Okay? Uh, uh, for example, I think just now we talked about uh, the book by Harari, uh, Homo Deus. Uh, and there's also another book uh, called, and, uh, with the name Life 3.0, uh, written by Professor Max Tegmark of MIT. Okay, so Professor Tegmark mentioned that in fact, life uh, can be separate into this life 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Okay, 1.0 is true evolutions. That means that whatever knowledge uh, 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 any species want to actually transfer to the next generation is through the DNA. It's through DNA, so it's through evolutions. So the changes will be slower, okay, because it takes uh, one generation for the gene and you know, to transfer to the next, uh, 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 next generation uh, for it to adapt to the change in the environment. But human being, because we know, we create, uh, we know language, uh, we know how to communicate and all that, and we, uh, we, we can learn. Uh, and because this capability, he mentioned that this is life 2.0, which is education. Because through education, we don't have to wait for the knowledge to be transferred through the gene. In fact, we can right away tell the, our younger generation, our children, our students and all that, what can be done, what should not be done, and all that. It's through this education, we can transfer the knowledge to the next generation. Uh, so he termed that this kind of species and all that is called uh, 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 life 2.0 species. Okay? And in his book, he's talking about life 3.0. <laughs> what does it mean, life 3.0? Oh, in the life 3.0, maybe at that time, uh, 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 with the advances in the medical technology, it is very easy for us to replace our organs. We can replace our organs and all that. And in fact, uh, maybe hopefully, maybe in future, it is also possible for us to transfer our knowledge or whatever in our brain to a new brain. Uh, uh, because I'm not too sure of whether consciousness can be brought to the new body and new brain or not. This is not too sure, okay? But this is what he described in Life 3.0. And maybe you are also aware about this new company, uh, new startup company actually founded by the entrepreneur Elon Musk, who also founded uh, SpaceX and also Tesla. Now, I think last week, the company actually have this demo. You can actually go to this uh, YouTube and look for this. Neuralink. This is the name of the company. Neural uh, from Neuron. Neuralink. Now this company just demonstrated that it is possible for them to implant tiny, tiny sensors, okay, into our brain cells, okay, and collect whatever signals from the neurons, okay, and analyzing and then know that what kind of neuron, what kind of new human thinking. Uh, we'll see make what kinds of the signals. So by analyzing this one, okay, and then they will be able, hopefully in future, that uh, to re actually reintroduce the signal back to the brain, especially the brain, the part of the brain which is actually faulty or deteriorating because of the age and all that. Okay, like Parkinson disease or Alzheimer's disease and all that. So that hopefully. Uh, 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 those uh, people with this kind of disease before 
it happen, they can actually record down uh, the kind of information. And then when they have this disease, they can actually reintroduce back this kind of uh, signals so that uh, they can function back uh, their own old memory and all that. Uh, you can look for uh, in the YouTube for this company called Neuralink. In fact, just last week, they have actually a demonstration about how they have implanted on one type of animals. Okay, and see how they can in fact now uh, uh, synchronize and knowing that when uh, the, uh, the animal is moving, its limbs and all that, uh, 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 how you trigger what kind of signals uh, uh, in the brain and all that, and they can successfully record it and, and all that, okay, with the implanted uh, chip and also sensors uh, into the brain, okay. So that is one possibility of life 3.0, I mean superhuman. Okay, superhuman. That means that maybe in future we can live longer because we can replace our organs and, and maybe transfer our mind or the memory to another new brain. Now, the other challenge is actually maybe although we can do that, it may be too slow. <laughs> uh, there's another challenge coming from this AI robot, all the robots with artificial intelligence, and because Everything can be replaced and all that, and they can have the networking, they can think together, they can they don't need to sleep and all that. They advance so fast, then they replace our human races. This is another possibility of life 3.0. Okay, so knowing all this one, uh, it's very interesting to know uh, 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 all these intelligent robots. And as you can see previously, uh, the AlphaGo challenge and all that. Now they are talking about swarms. Uh, robots, swarms of robots, because you can make many, many tiny robots and they work together collectively and all that. And there's a company uh, called Boston Dynamics. I will advise you to go and go to YouTube and type Boston Dynamics. You can see all the robots that they have created. Like for example, you can see that uh, the left-hand side, the second photo, the, the robot called Atlas. Okay, I, we don't have time to show this video. In fact, it's, it works like people, the normal people walking on the snowy ground, on the mountain, and it can climb, it can actually do some sort, it can jump, it can actually run, okay? Like human being. Uh, you, you, I think you, you all should actually, uh, you have time, take a look at these uh, robots from Boston I mean. So if you look at this robot and plus with AI, so most likely the one with the AI robot may come very soon. And if you look at the the other one, the the second the the, the left hand column and the last uh, uh, photo, uh, it is also what we call the nano robots. Maybe in future, instead of actually taking, uh, I don't know, vaccine or antibiotics and all that, uh, we can actually drink a swarm of uh, these nano robots, and you go to our blood. Uh, uh, vessels and then identify a particular bacteria or uh, virus and then to remove them one by one and this is how we cure this disease or disease in future okay so all these are new developments and all that so with all these new developments people will start thinking can can it be that in future with all this superhuman or life 3.0 or the latest AI and all that, then in fact, in future, we have less and less worry, less and less problem, mental problems and all that, okay? Okay, let us actually look at the evolution of human society from the primitive agricultural, industrial, commercial, ICT, internet, and in future, robotic and intelligence. But we found out that over this generations and all that. Of course, we have more convenience, we live a more comfortable life, but our mental problem continues. Even with WhatsApp, Facebook, social media and all that, uh, sometimes at this moment you may be happy, the next moment we receive a WhatsApp message and you can be sad. And then the next moment, another Facebook announcement, you'll be happy again. So our emotion actually frustrates every day because of this one. So that means that maybe the technology, advancement of technology, we still be not, we may not be actually able to overcome these human problems in terms of our mind, uh, our suffering and all that. Uh, that may be something that we, we might want to think about it. Okay. Now in the old days, uh, uh, previously, uh, so maybe, maybe 20 years ago and all that, okay, 
the the children students and all that they grow up with the educations and all that okay they they know and from the parents uh the share their experience with the children and all that they know what to handle the earth and all that uh handle all the matters they they are dealing with but nowadays every day they are actually experienced and they are receiving all kinds of information uh from the internet from social media also and, and because of that one uh Maybe they have not gained enough life experience, you know? so a lot of them they are uncertain, a lot, a lot about many things, and that's why there may be more frustration, uh, frustration in terms of their mind, their emotion, and also that may also cause uh, anxiety and depression. Okay, so from here maybe technology um may not be a suitable or, or a complete solution to this one. Now the next slide actually show you that even in all the scientific movie, uh, or sorry, sorry, all the science fiction movies, okay, you can see that all the storyline inside these uh, uh, science fiction movies uh, is also about emotions, about uh, love, hatred, uh, about worries, about suffering, about sadness, and those kind of things. Okay, so that's why. Uh, 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 there's this movement, these studies by uh, Professor Paul Ekman. Uh, this actually study was actually supported by Dalai Lama, and he, Professor Paul Ekman, actually surveyed 248 global top psychologists from different countries and all that. Okay, and they actually found out that in fact, for human emotions, there are these five areas, five major types of human emotion, namely. Anger, fear, disgust, uh, uh, sadness, and enjoyment that actually are common to all the different human societies on earth. Okay, so and and, and because of that one, uh, maybe you have actually watched the movie uh, by Disney called Inside Out. Okay, now Inside Out, the five characters inside the movie are actually modeled after this research by Professor Paul Ekman. Anger, fear, disgust, and sadness, and enjoyment. All right. In fact, uh, for 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 all of us, uh, if you want to know more about how our mind is working, I would highly or uh, strongly recommend you to watch this movie Inside Out. Then you will actually know better how our mind works, how our feelings and emotions actually works, and all that, and you uh, to un better understand this. So if you search the internet for Alice of Emotion, you can see this website created by uh, Professor Paul Ekman. They actually try to tell us that this uh, with these five major human emotion, and they can subdivide them into different levels of the human emotion and how it actually trigger. And because they believe that if we know more details about how it triggers and all that, we'll be able for us to know how to manage all these emotions better okay so you're most welcome to actually visit this website atlas of emotions okay so knowing all these emotions and all that uh, in fact now coming back to our brain now inside our brain when we are actually seeing for example we are seeing dealing with uh, our daily life we are uh, having party or uh, we are actually enjoying our meal and all that uh, but Although we can visualize all this, but inside there, if you go to our brain, in fact, it's like this. It's dark inside there because it's all the functions of the, our neurons, our neurons and interconnections of neurons that are actually stimulating this visual inspect, uh, impression that we have. Okay, So what we perceive about the earth is actually also formed by our neural network. Okay, so for a newborn baby, when he starts seeing the earth and all that, if the neuron inside uh, his or her uh, brain start uh, doing all the interconnection, then from education, from experiences and all that, it start build up all this interconnection, and that's how he or she will perceive the the earth, okay, uh, the the world and all that. So it is very important for him and her to if she realize that if if anybody wants to start actually knowing their mind and want to uh, uh, manage it better and to handle uh, the world better and all, in fact, there's one way that uh, we can do 
which is actually to cultivate our mind. Okay, so the construction of inner world, uh, as you can see from this uh, uh, diagram, you can see that from outside world, through our five senses and all that, uh, we are actually recept uh, our receptors, eyes, ears, nose, skin, tongue, we receive all these signals, information from the outside world. And then this one set up and influence our our interconnections, our neural network, and, and that neural networks actually will help us uh, we shape our world, <laughs> our opinions and all that. And then in future, when we make decisions and we, we think and all that, it's actually based on all these neural network uh, connections as well. Okay. But one thing I would like to highlight is, is that, in fact, even when we, our eyes can see things, we are not seeing the full spectrum, you know. We are only seeing the vis visible light. Okay, for example, when we look at trees, okay, we may say, oh, this is a small tree. Uh, maybe there's a need that we cut this tree. Okay, but if we have this uh, power of visualize the whole spectrum, we can see that the tree underneath there are roots. Okay, and 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 there are all kinds of uh, uh, mechanism organisms inside beneath the tree, connecting to other trees as well and all that. So. But before we decide that we want to cut the tree, we may think twice because of this ecosystem we are seeing. And then, in fact, if we are seeing more, for example, nano scales and all that, we are seeing that uh, we are breathing in the oxygen from the trees. <laughs> okay, so by seeing this one, maybe we see that, oh, we understand that we are interconnected, we are interdependent. So when we actually look at the nature, we look at the, uh, the environment, we may have different feelings. And we know that if we are all together, okay, then uh, uh, it's much easier for us to, to know that how we can actually help to protect the environment, how we can actually uh, uh, protect the animal life, how we see that our bacteria inside our human body as an ecosystem symbiosis how we want to maintain a good balance between our human body and the bacteria and propon, pro, uh, cultivate the development of good bacteria and all that so all this actually will affect us uh, if we can see the the whole world okay and, and, and all that all the latest research if you go to youtube and others you can also see now there are actually a, a lot of these uh, uh, research showing that if we can maintain a good uh, healthy ecosystem of gut bacteria okay by eating more plant-based food because they consume on this one okay and in fact uh, 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 having a good uh, stomach and gut system and all that and because all this one, the the bacteria, they also release this neurotransmitter like uh, serotonin, uh, dopamine, and all that. Will help when our brain absorb it and all that will help us to have a, a more comfortable and more joyful mind. Then you can see that in fact our gut health, the health of our gut systems and stomach and all that, in fact also influence how we. Uh, our feeling, our emotions every day. <laughs> so having a, a more plant-based, uh, natural, I'm talking about natural plant-based uh, 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 food uh, uh, or diet and all that. In fact, we can improve our emotions, can improve our, 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 uh, our, uh, our problems, uh, 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 our challenges of having this depression, anxiety. This is this new in in interconnection that we are learning from science. Okay, okay. So now coming back to this inner world. So as, as what we perceive and all that, and with the hundred billion neurons and hundred trillion neuron connections, that's how we actually start developing. And now, if you look at the uh, uh, lower right corner, there is this uh, pictures of what we call connectum. There's now actually a a, a, a scientific uh, research project. Uh, going on, uh, a connectome, trying to see that whether they can map all the neurons uh, of human being uh, and their connections. And if this project is complete, hopefully we can understand that the moment where we see things, how it trigger, which part of neuron will be trigger, and how we react, how we retrieve our past memory and then make decisions and all that. Hopefully in future that we can know how our mind think better. Okay. 
So, so if you look at the next slide, construction of inner world, okay, from when the uh, from newborn baby and then also from adult, you can see that over the years, we actually start uh, building our neuron connections uh, as we learn, as we experience. And this construction, reconnection of neural network uh, is actually through uh, our DNA, of course, the influence of DNA, our family, the sharing of the family experience, teaching, culture, religion, values, education, experience, news, entertainment, social media, internet, all these ones will shape our inner world. And because now our generations, our society now, not like maybe 20, 30 years where we have uh, limited resources of information uh, uh, or maybe standard way of uh, sources of information. Now, every single person, every day we are receiving different kinds of information from the subscription through our social media network and all that. So in fact, uh, uh, our structures, our interconnections in the mind and all that uh, may have even more varieties nowadays among all people on earth. Okay. Okay. So that's why uh, uh, now we are talking about this through this cyber world. Okay. In fact, we are creating a virtual world, uh, which is on its own, uh, 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 that without realizing it's become bigger and bigger every day. Uh, we have a lot of things that we uh, react, uh, we experience, we absorb from the internet world. And inside our mind, our neurons are also connected. Uh, and our, our actions, our wording, everything is actually left inside the cyber world. So slowly, we are moving this virtual world. We are growing this part of virtual world. That will, in turn, also reflecting or, or affecting our own neuron connections in our brain. Okay, uh, This is something that we have to look at it when we are talking about all these... Uh, emotional uh, changes and challenges and also problem that uh, uh, people are facing now okay so you can see that even in a hollywood movie there are more and more view movies uh, uh, talking about virtual world okay how actually uh, people maybe in future we even spend more time in the virtual world that all the sufferings or all the emotions all the love uh, or, 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 or any other kind of uh, uh, experiences will be experienced more uh, through the virtual world. Okay, so now I would like to share with you uh, 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 a very good book uh, by uh, Nobel laureate uh, Daniel Kahneman. Okay, uh, thinking fast and thinking fast and slow. Uh, it is actually very important for us uh, to understand that uh, because in this book, uh, he he himself is actually a psychologist. Okay, uh, but he won the Nobel Prize in, in, in economics because of his research in, in, in knowing our uh, human behavior, okay, in dealing with the economic world. Okay, now he mentioned in his book, he mentioned about our, we have actually two systems of thinking uh, in our brain, two systems of thinking. One is actually system one, is fast, automatic, uh, and all that is fast response and all that. Okay, and system two is actually slow because uh, it is effortful because you have to think, you have to analyze before you make decisions. There are basically these two system of uh, thinking. Okay, now to elaborate this one, maybe I will actually like to share with you one example. Maybe it's easier for you to understand how these two uh, uh, way of thinking is happening in our mind, uh, happening in our mind, and, and, and how this involves our neuron connections. Okay, for example, if today I bring uh, for you a durian, okay? Now, this durian, if you open it up, inside there is actually a brew durian. The fruits are brew, uh, du brew durians and all that. And then I, I tell you that, oh, this is actually very delicious. In fact, this is very delicious and I've tried it. I would like to actually introduce to you. Now, uh, uh, at uh, your your first response may be what? No, I don't like it. Uh, this is disgusting or whatever. I don't think this is tasty or whatever. It's a brew then How can the brew then be tasty and delicious? For example, okay, that is uh. Then after that, 
I tell you that, no, don't, don't worry. I have tested it. I tried it. Why don't you try it a little bit? In fact, you see, in the internet, there's also people talking about it. For example, lah, okay, that blue durian is most is very tasty, delicious and all that. And then you believe in what I say and you taste it and you find out, oh, it's true. It is actually good tasting and all that. It's delicious and all that. It's maybe, maybe even better than Musang King or whatever. Okay. So you like it and all that. Okay. Then maybe after a month, okay, uh, uh, I bring you another brew durian. And this time I want to I, I ask you, do you want to take this? Then immediately you tell them, oh, I'd like to try it and all that. Okay. So now from this example, in fact, you, you are involving both system one and system two. The, the first moment when I bring the, the brew durian to you, your system one is thinking. Because your neural network is already connected and all that, you know that cannot be brew durian cannot be tasty and and delicious and all that. So you say you right away reject it. So you use system one fast response. Okay, then after that I persuade you, I show you example and taste it myself and then show that evidence and then you you think about it. Then you want to try and you make decision to try and you taste it and you, you find out, oh, this is actually really tasty and delicious. Okay. Then you're using your system through. Okay. Now, after a month, when I bring the durian back to you, then because your new, new neuron network has actually have been connected and then you know that it's good. So right away, you use your system one to think about it. And then you say right away, you say that, oh, I like to taste it again. Okay, so this is how our thinking as mentioned by Daniel Kahneman in his book. So basically from here, we can actually see that if we want to change our mind, it is possible. If we want to come our mind, if we want to change how our relationships, relationship with our family members, with our neighborhood, with, with, with other people in the company, with other parts of the world and all that, it is possible. It's all coming back to our own thinking okay so that's why it is very important that whatever thing that we do just like just now we have this puja and all that uh and all that every day try to be actually have a uh, uh, thing about good things okay say about good works and do good works do good deeds and all that because all this everything we are doing every day is actually leaving uh, our influences and our traces and connections in our neural network inside our brain and the same thing whatever we do whatever we react and uh, experience and all that all, all those people who experience uh, from us uh, 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 interacting with us and all that that will also give them good impression that will help to actually slowly shape their neural networks and all that so that's why it is very important from here that uh, technology may not be the solution, but we can do it within ourselves by cultivate our mind. Uh, always say good words, uh, uh, do good things, and then also uh, 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 have good thoughts and all that. Uh, this is very important, as we can see here. Huh? So uh, now I'd like to share with you uh, uh, another few slides, and then I'll actually open this up for actually Q and A. Okay, now. As you all know, emotional, the author of Emotional Intelligence, uh, Daniel Goleman, he wrote this book and then it was bestseller and everybody knows the importance of emotional intelligence. In fact, he, during his time when he was postgraduate student at Harvard University, he had already done uh, research and then also practicing some meditations. Okay, And recent year, he has actually together with uh, Professor Richard uh, Davidson, uh, wrote another new book called Altered uh, Traits. Uh, they actually try to study meditation, meditation, the effect of meditation. Okay. Uh, uh, of course, in this case, without any uh, connection to the religious practices, it's purely meditations and all that, using cognitive science and psychology. And they found out that, in fact, uh, through their study using uh, magnetic uh, resonance, uh, MRI uh, 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 machines and all that, nah, they found out that, in fact, there's a good connection uh, effect from meditation uh, uh, through the study of cognitive science and psychology. Uh, and nowadays, as you know, uh, 
Mindfulness-based stress reduction courses are very popular in multinational companies such as Google and Apple that they have classes for their employees. Uh, it's a way that how they can calm their mind, uh, how to be focused, how to be mindful and all that so that they can reduce their stress and all that. Uh, in fact, uh, after eight weeks of 30 hours of MBSR training, the research showed that, that the stress response of their amygdala, amygdala is actually the, the, the almond-shaped kind of a, 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 a organ inside our brain that is responsive to all our emotions. Okay, So they found out that after eight weeks of 30 hours of MBSR training, the stress response, the activity of this one can be reduced by 50%. That means that people will be able to control their emotions better, manage their emotions better. Okay. Okay. Now, and all these uh, recent years, they can see that there's increase of academic papers on meditation and mindfulness. Uh, uh, it's actually large increase. And now that means that the scientific world are actually focusing more and more uh, research uh, uh, in these meditations and all and mindfulness. Okay. For those people who are interested in all these papers, you can actually go to Google Scholar website and then type uh, meditation or mindfulness. You can actually get access to some of these papers. Now, before I move on to the rest of this bullet point, I would like to also share with you. Nowadays, you know that there are people who like to actually uh, invo get involved in this like mountain climbing and cliff climbing kind of activities, cliff climbing and all, okay, uh, which is very dangerous and all that. Uh, why are they interested in this kind of thing, uh, sport? Because it's dangerous. But actually, if you look at this one, it's because the sport is actually uh, very dangerous because their life uh, depends on their full concentration of every step uh, they do. And because of that full con con mind concentration and mindfulness, during the time when they do, there's no disruption in their mind they feel much less stressed and all that. And that's why they like this kind of a, 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 a sport activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in fact, this kind of flow state of mind, we can have it. Sometimes when we, we enjoy so much in doing certain things, we enter this flow state, uh, flow, F-L-O-W, flow state. Uh, that time flies very fast. And because we are simply being mindful about what we are doing, Okay, so from this research, you can see that it's very important that if you can concentrate uh, and be mindful, uh, in fact, there will be actually less emotional frustration. Uh, from the book, you can see that all this research has also shown this strong effect of meta meditation in loving kindness and improvements. They say that uh, uh, when, when, when you do this meta meditation, uh, you can see a large impact in terms of the activities uh, of the amygdala and then improving in terms of loving kindness uh, from their research. Uh, I know that uh, BGF every Wednesday night, uh, uh, Brother Vittori will actually conduct this uh, meta meditation. I also join <laughs> uh, for some of the occasion. This is really good, okay, uh, because uh, from research it shows that it helps, uh, we have a strong effect. Okay, and after three months, another research from uh, uh, also a Nobel laureate, uh, Professor Backburn, uh, who actually won the Nobel Prize because of the uh, knowing the effect, uh, founding this effect of telomeres and also telomere. They found out that in fact, uh, the, with the meditation, uh, with good exercise, good sleep, and good plant-based diet and all that, all have this uh, effect of slowing down our aging. Uh, so this is another scientific book to show the effects of this one. Okay. And recent uh, cognitive science research have shown that, you know, uh, because through the evolutions, uh, they found out that whenever we are mindfulness, uh, when we are actually mindful in our work, whatever we do, our brain will focus on doing whatever things that we do. But the moment we are not mindful, the moment we are actually uh, not focusing, uh, focusing in our work and all that. Uh. Then there's this part of the network called default mode network in our brain. Different parts of the uh, brain, uh, the default mode, uh, will become active. And when we are not mindful and we are not actually focusing our work and all that, this default work my, uh, network will activate. And then the function of this network is like this. You start doing mind-wandering. You start thinking about the future, planning, 
you start thinking about the past, worrying, uh, 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 do, doing a lot of things and all that. Because uh, through the evolution, when we, the uh, at that time, maybe we are still, for example, the ancestors still living in the Africa continents and all that. And all, they have to worry. The moment when they actually are, 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 are finishing their meal and all, they have to worry about the next meal. They have to worry, uh, thinking about the threat from the animals and those ones. That's why this default mode network will actually be created so that they are alert and they try to solve the problem. But nowadays in modern world, a lot of us actually, we have a lot of free time. So when we are not focused on our work, uh, be mindful, this default mode network will be triggered. And then we start thinking about uh, future, past, uh, and all that. And then start thinking more and more, and then start worrying, start uh, and emotionally become actually be uh, affected and all that. Okay. So from this research of this and from this book, they find out that in fact, by doing meditations, uh, by being mindful and all that, you can actually come down and reduce the activities of this default mood network and help us to manage our emotion better. Okay, and, and the other one research I'd like to share with you is actually from this Professor Sonia Lubomirsky's uh, group from University of California at Riverside. Their team has actually surveyed over 225 journal papers uh, or research papers uh, which involved 275,000 uh, as they are, uh, uh, who participated in this survey and all that. They found out that in fact, uh, the old traditional way of thinking that if you are successful, then you'll be happy is wrong. In fact, it's the other way around. They found out that if we can actually cultivate our mind, control our emotions and all that, and be happy, be more joyful, be more loving kindness and be thankful to what we have, huh, then we are more likely to be successful. <laughs> uh, so this is the cause and effect that we found out from the research and all that. So, so that's why it is very important for us to understand this one. So for our children, from the students, for our, our employee, for our family members and all that, try if they want to be successful and all that in life and all that. In a lot of time, it goes back to how we actually can cultivate our mind, how we can actually have this loving kindness, how we can actually feel thankful. When we feel thankful and then with the empathy, then you normally will feel happier. And because of that one, I think uh, you, you become more successful. This is from this research. In fact, for a, a, a Harvard research of 20, uh, 75 years of study, 75 years, they interview the Harvard uh, students and also the people who are actually poor uh, uh, from many family in Boston starting for more than 75 years ago and track them every year. And after tracking for over 75 years, they actually find out that, uh, in fact, uh, 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 what actually make us happy or make us think that this is actually a meaningful life is because we have good relationships, either with family members, with uh, like society like BGF and others. If you can maintain this good relationship, not and, and, uh, and throughout your life and all that, because human being human, you need this kind of uh, human support and all that. You feel that uh, you have actually had a good life. And this is actually not uh, uh, related to how many uh, 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 relationships you have, you know. Uh, even you have 1,000 or 100,000 likes on Facebook, doesn't mean, mean that you, you, you feel actually joyful. Uh, more important is actually more this close relationship with your family, with your friends, with your community, uh, with your society, and all this will help people to actually think that they have a good life. And it does not matter whether you are Harvard graduate or you are actually from the needy family. Okay, so this one you can also find from the uh, YouTube. You just type Harvard uh, 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 happiness study or, or 75 years and all you can uh, check all these results. Okay, so now, okay, so after understand all this, maybe I do a quick summary of this part. Okay, contemplating on this impermanence as we can see and all that. So uh, uh, it's important by running all this from the universe, uh, from all these cause effects and conditions and all that. 
So while living, working on doing, we can also contemplate on the impermanence by knowing the nature that things change every day uh, and I know that. Uh, uh, so that by knowing this one, we will be able to actually uh, handle uh, the problem or face the world better. And, and all, everything is impermanent and also interdependent. So if you want to have actually a, a good a society, good family, uh, or you want to have a good world and all that, everything is independent, okay? And, and, and we have to actually uh, uh, see how from our thoughts, from our, the thing we do and the word we say, how to help uh, the world to become better. And then uh, anything can happen when the condition is right, live at present and accept anything that had happened and also can happen. Uh, this is uh, the kind of the attitude la, we can have. is actually by knowing this one, by knowing this nature and all that, la, then we'll be able to know oh, whatever happened that must, is, must have its cause and reason conditions. So when it happened, we just accept it, but we just face it and then handle it. Okay, whatever that has happened is because of its cause, previous cause and reason. Uh, it's, it's no way we can change it anymore because it had happened. But what we can do is that we can live it in the present moment, adapt to outside change and be mindful and overcome this one and be grateful and send metta, loving kindness uh, all the time. And in fact, this is actually a wonderful work. Huh? Okay. Then, uh, lastly, I would like to share with you. So all the sharing that I've done, uh, uh, especially all this from the findings from different stream of sciences and all that and how lives are connected, you know, that I've written a book. Uh, it is uh, in Mandarin, in, in Chinese. Okay, it is in Chinese uh, called Our Lives, uh, Particles and the Universe. Uh, uh, it costs uh, 20, 28 ringgit, okay? Uh, and uh, 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 for those who are interested in this one, you can contact me through email, then I can arrange for you to buy it directly from the publishers. Uh, and, and it's also agreed with the publishers that uh, after deducting the expenses, the 40% of this one uh, will be contributed to our uh, uh, the construction of our Utah teaching hospital. Our, we are building, our university is building a hospital, not for profit hospital. And we also are raising money. And then uh, if you are interested in this book, then the, uh, we will actually the 40% of this proceed after deducting the expenses will be donated to the Utah hospital. Okay, that's all I, I, I want to say. Thank you very much to all of you for your attention. Thank you so much. And uh, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, so now we have some time for these uh, discussions. I noticed there's actually one question. Okay. Uh, oh, there's actually a sharing saying that uh, mindfulness actually improved in terms of exam grade uh, from a research at MIT. And this is true. You can actually find out this result. They actually find out that uh, those students who have gone through this mindfulness training, in fact, they are SAT score. <laughs> Uh, the college entrance examination uh, in US actually improves <laughs> uh, and also improve on the EQ and all that. Okay. Now, uh, for us, actually, uh, uh, we do have actually provide some uh, mindfulness webinars and training for those students uh, who are interested in this one, of course, in this uh, secular uh, setting. And uh, I think some of the department, they are also organizing uh, in this coming November, uh, international mindfulness conferences, okay? Uh, and and uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, MBSR is now actually widely uh, actually uh, uh, used by many multinational companies like Google, Apple and all that to help people to actually practice and then uh, just by, by be so that they can be mindful, they can focus on their work. And in this case, there will be less disruption to their emotions and that help us to help them to actually uh, uh, to actually uh, reduce their depressions, anxieties and all that. Okay. Oh, there's another question. Does mindfulness means mind is full? 
we will, we fill our mind with so much information and awareness of uh, things happening around us and making our mind full. Oh, okay. Now, actually, uh, of course, you can find actually many uh, 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 videos and talks uh, on mindfulness, and also there are many books on mindfulness, lah. Okay, but basically, uh, mindfulness is actually that uh, 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 by training the way how. Uh, our brain, our neural network connections, and also how we, we, we think, how we perceive things. See, at, at all time, we are receiving information through our eyes, through our ears, and all we are listening and all that. Okay? And, and sometimes, uh, when all this come in and all that, with some people, uh, they meet, because of their neural network interconnection, they may immediately actually trigger some emotional response. Okay? For example, and all that. Okay, by, by having this kind of training and so that slowly uh, uh, you actually realize uh, that all the thoughts that have come into your brain, you can observe, you know that it's ups and down and all that. Okay, and when the moment we can do this one, we, we can actually be, uh, be less disrupted by this part. Okay, we will trigger less uh, emotional response from amygdala, and we use more on our prefrontal cortex and all that to actually do logical thinking and all that. Uh, that is actually one way lah, in terms of actually having it. But mindfulness has actually more broader sense in, in terms of that. Uh, if we can actually uh, cultivate your mind and practice this one, then for example, uh, uh, like for example, uh, when you are actually uh, listening to a talk, when you are actually uh, uh, doing your cooking and all that. For example, when we are doing your cooking. So just focus on mind on your cooking, okay? And then be so uh, uh, immersive in your cooking that you, you maybe you forget about the whole world and all that. But sometimes when we do the cooking, we may think about other things. Oh, what happened? And what, what will happen and don't know, and then start worrying and all that. And because that the mind wanders and all that, and then maybe less focus. And we may even actually, I don't know, uh, 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 have a very uh, actually uh, uh, not a good experience in our cooking as well. So by just by being paying attention to what we do, uh, we can actually reduce the actions of the default mode network. Uh, and then have actually more peaceful mind and then has less worry, okay? But of course, what I'm covering is actually just a small part of it. You can actually find more information about mindfulness. And I suppose, I think uh, BGF also conduct uh, uh, talks and practices on mindfulness. I, you're most welcome to join. Haha. <laughs> That is actually a question that is there a free view or is free view actually conditioned? Uh, that one, uh, of course, this is a, a active, uh, slowly uh, active research topic la, and it's actually slowly gaining importance uh, in the scientific world uh, because now as uh, 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 scientists know more about how neuron works, the neuron interconnections, uh, they are now actually talking more about uh, uh, our consciousness. But at this moment, there's no conclusive uh, uh, finding yet. Uh, they are uh, still thinking about this one, whether it is purely, there's actually one research by a Berkeley group uh, that actually shows that, in fact, sometimes before we make any decision, in fact, our for, if they measure the human network activity, you can actually see that uh, there are already some uh, 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 preparation made uh, before you make that uh, decision. It's based on your uh, system one thinking, just now system one thinking. So in this case, maybe uh, uh, whatever decision we make, maybe it's shaped by all our past experience and our past uh, connection, our current uh, uh, interconnections in the neural network. There's one actually study to show that one. But of course, there are also other arguments uh, currently. Okay. Uh, uh, at this moment, it's still a uh, research area. We, we, we don't know. <laughs> and, and there are also people saying that, how can you be sure? And what kind of people have, uh, 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 what level of, uh, what kind of uh, animals 
uh, whether the animal also has consciousness and, and other things. So it is actually it's currently is still being researched by the scientists and all that. Uh, and, and whether quantum, quantum world, okay, the fluctuations of quantum worlds and the entanglement of uh, the quantum particles and all that, whether it has any meaning, all, all these are still being researched at this moment. Okay, uh, there's actually questions that some scientists and uh, people, free thinker, actually think that we are accidentally created by the Big Bang Theory. Please comment on this one. Now, uh, uh, on this part, I think uh, you, uh, I think best way is actually you, if you are interested in this one, you can actually read this book by Professor Alan Lightman of MIT on this accidental universe. Now, if you go to Google, uh, book, huh? you can actually uh, uh, get a digital copy. He actually explained it more uh, from this uh, physicist's point of view, lah, okay, about this one, based on the conditions and based on the cause and effect, okay? So I suggest that uh, if you're interested in this one, you can read that book. Uh, thank, thank you, Professor. There's a final question. You have been uh, sharing, wonderful sharing based on science and uh, reinforcing what the Buddha taught all this while. That uh, actually science <coughs> reinforces uh, about impermanence and about uh, how we can use uh, meditation and mindfulness to help stabilize ourselves and more emotional uh, intelligence. So uh, our next talk will be by General Dr. Dhammapala on this uh, relating to meditation on the five hindrances. And it will be a sutta workshop where there will be two talks, one at 10 a.m., the other one at 3 p.m. on the 20th September. So it's two weeks times, 20th September. And uh, this afternoon, for those BGF members, kindly join us for uh, online AGM at 2.30. So those who haven't registered, you have to click a link to register your name first, and then uh, only you can uh, be allowed in to vote. So uh, thank you, Prof, again, once again, for a wonderful sharing, and uh, see all of you this afternoon. And also on the 22nd of uh, September, it's a Tuesday night, we'll be inviting Dr. Yoga King from USM to share on uh, mindfulness in daily life. So it'll be an evening talk. Okay, so uh, hope to see all of you again. And uh, this talk will be posted live on YouTube. We'll be uploading the talk to YouTube and we'll be giving a link to the PowerPoint slides by Professor Ui uh, with his consent. And uh, also, uh, we are putting his email there for those who wish to order his book. Kindly uh, do support Utah because uh, the funds will go to the Utah Building Fund. Uh, you, you still, hospital. sorry, you, Utah Hospital Building Fund, Teaching Hospital. Okay. So thank you, Prof, for the wonderful sharing and uh, for reinforcing our faith in the Buddha Dhamma. Thank you. Thank you.